Hello, I'm Pat Dale, your fire chief here at Grand Fire and Rescue. Today I'd like to discuss with you a funding alternative to taxation only, and that is the benefit charge. Oh, no, bring this to a commercial. Engine 59, engine 96, engine 94, router 91, Medic 95, and Graham, all station alert, channel dog alert, commercial structure fire. You're screaming in the background, smoke alarm sounding. You up the ceiling, I think we need to get our crews out. That's scene of a small one-story house. We have defensive fire conditions. 1094 establishing Canyon Command. Still an offensive strategy, 010. Multiple reports of a tractor on fire. At scene of a fast moving brush by undetermined size at this time. Battalion 94 and Engine 94 at scene. Small single story residence. We got a working fire. Smoke from Alpha and Charlie. Engine 95, level 1 at the hydrant. Hello, I'm Pat Dale, your fire chief here at Grand Fire and Rescue. Today I'm here to talk about our funding future and the fire benefit charge. But first of all, uh, I'd like to let you know that our funding future is what we're, what we're after is a more sustainable and stable funding for our fire department. And today I want to breathe some life into the words sustainable and stable. That's my goal. So recognizing the importance of our fire and Medic One service delivery and the limitations that are placed on us for taxing property in order to uh, get our funding, the legislature recognized that there could be a different alternative to taxing real property only, and that is uh, an alternative that's based on property size of structures, square footage, and the risk that is posed to the fire department uh, delivery, and that is known as a fire benefit charge, and that's what I'm going to discuss today. But first of all, I want to just remind everybody that our mission for Grand Fire and Rescue is professionalism, accountability, and caring. Those are our values that are found within the mission of our service delivery. So just a, again, a, a little overview of who we are. Grand Fire and Rescue, your Grand Fire and Rescue covers about 70 square miles. We're made up of nearly 70,000 residents. We have five staff fire stations, one volunteer station. Last year, we responded to 7,323 calls for service, and our team is made up of 97 career firefighters and paramedics, 16 volunteer firefighter residents, and we value our volunteers greatly here at Graham, 12 administrative and support staff, and eight support service volunteers, and most importantly, three additional members, and those are our firehouse goats known as Drip Torch and Frankie, our therapy goats as they really are. Okay, so our story really starts with thanking our citizens. Thank you, because in 2018, our citizens supported us warmly by passing a maintenance and operations levy for four years, which began in 2019 through the year 2022. And at that time, I promised our citizens that with that maintenance and operations levy, the excess temporary four-year levy, that we would hire 18 firefighters, purchase a, a water tender that I'll mention a little bit later, and recruit and bring on board 14 new volunteer firefighters. So that M&O maintenance and operations excess levy tax supports about 15% of our operating budget each of those four years, the years 2019 through 2022. And we accomplished what we said we would do by hiring the 18 firefighters, purchasing the tender, recruiting and onboarding 14 new volunteer firefighters. And because of that, we were recognized by the Washington Surveying and Rating Bureau as improving our fire protection class rating from a four to a three. What that means to you as citizens, it's literally money back in your pockets because that increase in, in our capability will translate, should translate to you saving on your premiums and your property insurance. 
So please check with your insurance carrier to see if you save money because of what you did supporting us and what we did improving our service delivery capability. Money back in your pocket. So instead of um, just waiting for the, the year 2022 to come to, to possibly renew the maintenance and operations levy, we've been investigating an alternative source of funding that could be more stable and sustainable. So I want to describe how we're currently funded briefly, and that is we have a, a regular fire tax levy that's an assessment of a maximum $1.50 per $1,000 of assessed property value. That's our fire levy. We're currently at $1.45 of that $1.50 maximum. We have an emergency medical service EMS levy, maximum of $0.50, cents, and that's where we're at. $0.50 cents of $1,000 per assessed property value. We're currently at the full $0.50. Cents. And then that maintenance and operations levy that I mentioned earlier is, was $0.62 cents per thousand of assessed property value, and we're currently at $0.53 cents of that $0.62 for a total of, the math adds up to $2.48 per thousand dollars of assessed property value. Now, all those levies are voter approved, and they're all based on taxes on real property value. That's how we're currently funded. Again, I want to remind you that the maintenance and operations levy is a four-year temporary levy. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about a possible alternative to that funding that I just overviewed that we're currently uh, provide our revenue from, and that is the benefit charge. So what is a benefit charge? It's not a tax. It's a fee based on structure size, so square footage, what the occupancy is used for, and what is the required firefighting force needed to control out-of-control fires within those structures and property. So naturally, larger structures with complications to our controlling fires pay more. Smaller, more simple structures when it comes to risk pay less. The benefit charge is, is categorized in four property types, and those are residential, commercial, mobile homes, and multifamily. So I'll talk a little bit more about those. Um, exemptions I wanted to mention, sort of similar to taxation. Exemptions are religious institutional facilities, nonprofits, public housing for seniors and low-income residents, so those housing authority properties are exempt from the fire benefit charge. Vacant land and or parcels of property that have structures that are less than 400 square feet are exempt. Public schools and publicly owned properties are all exempt from this assessment of fire benefit. So why are we looking into proposing this benefit charge? Well, our increase for our demand for service is going up as our population goes up. And as you can see here, it's gone up 40%, almost half again in the last 10 years, since 2010. So this benefit charge more fairly proportions a fee on properties not based on property value like taxes. This is very different. It's based on square footage of structure and the complications and risk that those buildings and property represent to our fire deployment. So it, it provides financial sustainability in the fact that it can be renewed after six years, if it's approved by voters, at a six-year mark it can be renewed to a permanent status like the fire tax and the EMS tax that I described earlier. It's more sustainable in that it shifts and diversifies part of our revenue stream away from taxes onto that risk and property size uh, a portion of our revenues, about a quarter, 25%, would come from this fire benefit charge. So you can see that it, not a tax based on assessed property value rising and falling. That's what makes our revenue source sort of volatile in nature, and this shifts a quarter of that revenue away from being volatile, providing sustainability for the long term and stability 
that it's not based on property value. <clears throat> so how much will it impact you, the fire benefit charge? Well, here's a, how much will I pay for, uh, for fire and medic one? So here's a simple graphic that explains our current funding again, the full uh, value of the fire levy, EMS levy, and that temporary maintenance and operations levy is added up to $2.48 per thousand dollar of assessed property value, all property tax. Now shifting over to the funding under, under the proposed benefit charge, the fire levy drops to a dollar per thousand dollars of assessed property value from $1.50. The EMS levy remains at 50 cents, so that total goes down to a maximum $1.50. Dollar fire levy, 50 cents EMS levy. So every property's taxes go down. And then what remains is the benefit charge. Again, it's a specific assessment on properties based on square footage and risk that it represents to our fire deployment. Now that's, that varies based on those uh, factors of fee. Now here's a, a graphic representation of what that looks like on, across those four building types, property types that I described earlier. So this is a, would be a snapshot in the year 2020 of our known, the evidence that we have on our current tax only funding structure based on if we were on the fire benefit charge today, what it would look like for these property types. And you can see a zero uh, plane that the first building type is residential would go down. So all residential properties in Grand Fire and Rescue will go down, and it's an average of almost 6% across those residential property types. Mobile homes go down a little bit, as you can see, just uh, less than 1%. Now, it shifts to larger buildings and property that have higher risk as it relates to our de fire deployment. So commercial goes up not a, in an average of not much, about 1.15% across our commercial structures. Multifamily goes up fairly significantly as represented here, an, an average of about 5% that multifamily goes up. Now the reason is that's a, a structure that first of all are larger, second they have people within them, so, so beds are, are within these structures, so that increases the life uh, risk and the deployment needed to control out of control fires with a life uh, hazard within those structures. So that's the, the, the revenue cost shift from entirely taxing to those four property types on the benefit charge. Now how is a benefit charge implemented and improved? And, and by the way, I want to uh, back up to this one and, and remind you that, well it's actually this one, remind everyone that if approved, this benefit charge model, the benefit charge will replace that four-year maintenance and operations levy. If approved November 3rd, 2020, this year, then the benefit charge will replace the taxes that we collect from that maintenance and operations levy. So overall, res again, back to this one, residential property owners within our district will go down. For that reason. Now, how is a benefit charge approved? Implementing the benefit charge initially requires a 60% majority of voter approval. Now, the, the term of that is six years, and like I mentioned earlier, after six years, reauthorization of the benefit charge can be uh, a voter approved to be permanent, much like our fire and EMS levies. So that takes a, a 60% in that option of approval for another six years is 50%. Approval for permanent is 60%. And that would provide that sustainability and uh, stabilization. So what happens if on November 3rd, the, the fire benefit charge is not approved by voters? Well, we'll continue on that model of taxation only that I described earlier. The, the combined dollar fifty per thousand, the EMS levy at fifty percent, and the final two years of the maintenance and operations levy uh, will 
will go through the year 2022. So at the, at the end of 2022, there's a decision that needs to be made by voters in our district, and that is to either continue a taxation, maintenance and operations levy tax, property tax, or the, the benefit charge, or we may have to talk about adjusting our service delivery ability. Have others in, in Washington State, and more specifically in our area, been on the fire benefit charge? And the answer is yes. As you can see from this slide, there's voters have approved the benefit charge in seven other fire agencies in the greater Puget Sound area, as you can see from this list. The closest one to us, of course, is Central Pierce, has been on it for about 20 years. And then there's various departments within the greater Puget Sound area that have been on it for a, a number of years. Next steps. So on July 22nd, our Board of Fire Commissioners approved unanimously to place the benefit charge on the November 3rd general election ballot. So between uh, July 22nd and November 3rd, we're going to be providing outreach so that we can provide everyone with information, fact-based information about the benefit charge so that you're well-informed and educated so you can make the decision on November 3rd. Then at that point, if 60% of the voters approve the benefit charge, residents will receive notice, much like they do with their taxes, and, and by far most people pay for this fee that's assessed on the benefit charge in their mortgage, much like your, your taxes, and that will occur if approved with 60% of the, the voters' approval, beginning in 2021. Uh, there's a note also that property owners may appeal that assessment during the month of December 2020. Okay, so I already talked about how it's assessed from the county assessor. Much It's similar to the way that the, the tax notification comes. For more information about this fire benefit charge, in addition to, to this video and presentation, thank you for allowing me to, to discuss this. Please visit uh, our website at, at grandfire.org or a specific email that if you have questions about your specific property, how will it will affect you, please use the email benefitcharge at grandfire.org and we'll get back to you and, and help you understand what this would do for your specific property. I want to thank you for allowing me to discuss this benefit charge. Your safety is our priority. Thank you.